Kirk Johnson, I'm president of the BMW Motorrad Club in Northern Illinois. In this do-it-yourself video, I want to show you a few of the things that you can do to your early model LT, especially the early model LT, but really it applies for uh, uh, all of the LTs. Some of the things you can do to, in, uh, to enhance and help out the performance of it. Um, things like the, uh, the canister ectomy, as it's known, and uh, unplugging or changing the fuel map uh, in the Moatronic unit, in the little computer unit, so that it runs better during the hot weather. So, uh, if you like our videos, uh, please rate and sub subscribe to them. Also, uh, if you would like to donate to our club, uh, so show your appreciation, please uh, check the link and, uh, and do so. We, we could really use the funds. We're just a small club up here in Northern Illinois, and uh, we, we appreciate it. So I'm going to get started on this and uh, I'll, I'll talk my way through it. So let's get started on the canister ectomy. Now the reason you'd want to, this is the charcoal canister right here. It's located underneath the box, underneath that top box, so you're going to have to remove the top box and then remove that plate that's on top of the top box. Get rid of that and you're going to see all this stuff here. Now what happens in these bikes is if the gas tank gets, you know, if you fill it up totally full, and um, it, whether the gas expands inside the tank or it, maybe the bike tips over, the gas will travel up through the line right here, this line coming into the canister, and it will fill the canister up with uh, e either partially or full of gas. And then the charcoal element in there turns like a big brick inside there and it clogs up. So that what happens then is it can't vacuum the gas fumes back out of here and it then it in turn sucks your gas tank in because your gas pump is running and the, the gas tank starts getting smaller and smaller and what it does then is it crushes the sending tube to the uh, uh, for the for your gas and you wind up uh, either never showing a full tank or you'll never show an empty tank it'll actually get stuck in there that happened on my bike when I first bought the bike it uh, it the gas tank had crushed in and I didn't know it. I almost ran out of gas. I was pretty amazed when I went to the gas station the first time and I put in 6.3 gallons of gas. Anyway, the problem was is that the fuel sending unit was stuck. So, we have to remove this piece here and reroute the hoses. In or now, these, these are, you know, something that they obviously they use for the EPA. They put it in Europe. Um, the bike gets 50 miles to the gallon as it is. And uh, you're not going to hurt anything by, by removing this, but, uh, and there's no uh, manual for this. This is not something that's a manual. Anyway, there are written instructions here, but this is just a visual overview of how to remove this. So you have to, you cut this zip tie here, get, get this out of here, and pull the canister loose, okay? Now you'll see a couple hoses here in the back, on the side. This one here goes off this way and routes up toward the engine. This one we're going to block entirely. So we're down here where it's connector, where the connector is. We're going to block it here by inserting, a, you know, you can use a golf tee or a, a screw or a nut or a, you know, or not a nut, but a bolt. You know, thread a bolt down in there. You just want to block it so no water or anything or uh, real air gets through this thing. So we can unhook it from its uh, from its moorings here. Now down here at the bottom of it. I don't know if you can see it on camera or not, but, oh geez, you can't see it. Okay, so down here at the bottom, this is the hose. If it gets too full, it has a, a drain hose that will drain out underneath the bike. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to still use this hose here, but we got to pull this, the canister, off. Now this other hose here, you'll see this one. This one goes up to the gas tank. This one here, we're going to reroute to connect with this hose here. This hose here, remember we're just going to block it. So we're going to pull off these hoses. Now this will really irritate the, uh, the dealership if you uh, take your bike in there and this is, this is missing. This pile of junk is missing off of your bike. I, I took it into my local dealership and they got all bent out of shape because they're like, oh, somebody's been jacking with the bike. Oh my gosh, you know, that's supposed to be there. That's the law. Yeah, well, it's my bike, so boo-hoo. Anyway, throw that out. 
Now we're going to take what I like to do here, up, up here, right here, we're in this connection. I'll unhook that connection and pull this, uh, this little bridge out of here, this little clear piece. I'm going to put it into, well, I thought I was going to put it into this one. I think it'll still go. Alright, that's not going to work. I have to snip it and then put it in because it's uh, it's pretty fat from being on the. Uh... So I'm going to cut it a little bit shorter here. All right. Then I'll take my little bridge piece, put it in there. Okay. So now I took this piece of the hose off, and then I'm gonna all I'm gonna do here on this corner, you can do it either way. It actually works best this way because it has this natural bend. I'm just gonna cut it right here, cut it off straight, cut that little corner off. Okay. I'm gonna hook it up here. And I'll put a zip tie back on here to close it all up. And then just hook this tube right to here. And that's that. So there it is routed. Now I'm going to take a zip tie, just zip this back down. Because I had to cut that one out so I could get to this uh, junction. And as you can see it's just routed right through here now. This is missing. It'll just route out now. So if, it, if this thing does push gas through here, the gas is going to drip down behind the bike, just like on any other bike that you might have. And now the only thing left is to go ahead and plug this thing up. No, I think I'm going to just, I'll just thread this bolt in there. And if you just thread them down pretty far, that'll be good enough. It's not going to fall out of there or anything. There we go. And then I can uh, zip tie that right to here too. And that'll be it. That's the canisterectomy. So if you haven't done this on your bike, I would encourage you to do it just because it's uh, this is not something that is very well thought out by BMW. They really did not do a lot of brain time when they put this one in, uh, only because it clogs up. I mean, on other bikes, when they have these on the other BMW bikes, like the, the R bikes and stuff like that, they all have the same canister on there. These things, uh, they work really good. They work fine. You don't ever have to mess with them. But on the LT, it's always been an issue. And then they'll, you know, if you take it to the dealer and they figure out, oh, this thing's clogged up, oh, you need a new one, it's going to cost you hundreds. The heck with that, just get rid of it. So something that happened to my bike when I first had it too was when it got over 80 degrees outside Fahrenheit, uh, the bike would run like garbage. It would start uh, kind of almost felt a little boggy. And it had a really bad hesitation, like a, probably a good half a second of hesitation. So you crack the throttle, and uh, it would it would feel like it was falling or stalling, and then it would suddenly leap to life. And what's going on there is when they made the, especially in these early model bikes like this one. This is a, a '99. I have a 2000, uh, so it's the exact same bike. The early Motronic units were having uh, fuel issues like basically it would the timing was way off when it it would uh, I think it was retarding the timing really bad during the hot weather so that uh, it wasn't starving for fuel or, or something but anyways it made the bike run like garbage so the the workaround for that is on this particular model here on the 99 and the 2000 maybe even the 2001 was to unplug the airbox temperature sensor. Now there's other models you have to look this information up for your specific bike. If you've got a 2005 or a 2004 you might have to snip what's called the brown wire in it and the location of that I'll, I'll show you where that is on the bike. I was able to uh, we, we did that service on a 2004 and I can and I, I'm showing where that location of that wire is. There's also on later bikes if you're having that issue 
you can remove what's called the uh, cat code plug and I'll show you where that location is as well but you have to you don't do multiple ones you don't un unplug the airbox temperature sensor and snip the brown wire and or take off the uh, uh, the cat code plug because you can definitely do some harm to the engine by doing all three of those or all two of those things don't do it only do one do your research before you do this particular one I know on these early bikes like this bike it makes a huge difference in the summertime man when it gets over 80 degrees the bike runs excellent because the engine thinks that it's colder out so it's still running full timing it's uh, it's still throwing the you know like a full load of fuel into it during running it doesn't hurt the mileage at all in fact on my bike I, I see 50 miles a gallon or better um, and I mean if I'm really on it I'm seeing like 45 and uh, anyway I'll show you where that location is on this thing right here this is the air box. Here's your radiator cap. Right here is the air box temperature sensor. And I wanted to show you where it is specifically for you new people out there that have not seen how one of these. Believe it or not, I you can get your hand up there, especially if you have a smaller hand. You can get your hand up through here and grab onto this plug with all the fairings on and everything. I was able to do mine with the fairings on. I was able to pull this plug off and wow what a difference that made. It was just like uh, the bike was running like it was supposed to run. Now this air box is actually pushed back a little bit. It's actually loose on the bike right now. It's uh, all the throttle bodies are loose everything because of the other service that we're doing. And uh, but I'll just I just wanted to demonstrate how these plugs work. All you do is there's this little wire right at the very top here you simply push it down and pull the plug off that's it and just let it sit in there you know where it's it's all tied up in here so it'll just hang out right there um, if you if you do this this service and you take your bike in somewhere like especially if you take it into the dealership and they you know let's say you take it in there and you're having your valves done they're gonna see oh who the heck knocked this plug off and they're gonna go ahead and do you the big favor by putting that stupid thing back on and uh, and then your bike will run like garbage again. So just remember, they may wind up putting that thing back on there. Take it back off. It really makes a huge difference. Okay, going back now. I'm going to, you know, looking at this bike here. If it had the brown wire, which it doesn't, it's going to be right underneath this rail here. So basically, your uh, adjuster here is going to be pointing at the location of the brown wire. And I'm, I'll show that a quick edit into the other uh, onto the other bike here it's like this one's an 04 uh, they've had these little wires right here and th this one has already been cut but this is the location that you would cut it it's underneath the rail here you'll find that there's a little brown wire loop that comes out you snip that wire and it changes the fuel map now if you have the type of bike that has a cat code plug it's going to look a lot like this plug right here might be over on this side. I can't remember where there is or if it's might maybe standing next to it. But do the research and find out where that cat code plug is and you just basically, you know, pry these apart, pull this plug right out of there and it will uh and then it changes the fuel map. So that's another thing that you can do to these bikes that really wake it up, make a huge difference and uh make you be able to just enjoy it some more. Continuing on with our performance enhancements, our another one that you're going to want to really check out here is the uh, adjuster, the the rear shock adjuster, the preload. And what you do here to check this thing out to make sure it's actually just functioning properly is you want to wind it all the way out. And if, if you feel it doing really just freewheeling like this even before it hits the standard uh, marks on here depending on where yours is at your might be set really light anyways I don't know what happens to these things I don't know where the oil goes that's inside these but they need to be refilled up refilled every once in a while so if you can freewheel this thing around and you you know you don't feel any resistance till you hit really way down here on this one it's it's pretty bad it, it gets all the way down past the standard position when I can start to feel resistance and uh, 
so we're going to have to take all this apart and refill this up with oil. And if you've never really had a look at what these do, if you follow the hose down here, it comes down to the uh, to the shock here. You can see the little there's a little plate here, and inside this, that fluid pushes against that plate and puts more tension on the spring. You can kind of see it here if I. Like start cranking down on this you can kind of see it start to move but it, it won't move its entire length because of uh, uh, because there's just not enough fluid in the system now I don't know where the fluid goes I swear the jack oil fairies come around and they steal the fluid in the middle of the night what we got to do here is we got to back this thing all the way out till it stops and we want to take off the banjo bolt here. At least crack this loose first. So get your uh, your 10 millimeter socket or wrench, and just crack it loose while it's still held on here, because it's kind of on there. It's on there pretty tight. So there we go. Crack loose. Now you can lift it up here and uh, and pull it off here. Now just take a note, you can see how it points up, so when you put it back together again, you know, you don't want this thing cranked way over here because it'll, it'll hit the seat. Um, it needs to just be kind of in a position in line with the, uh, uh, the mud guard. I'm going to pull this off all the way and then remove the banjo bolt being careful not to lose the, uh, th these little washers that are in here, these little copper washers. It's held on a lot like a brake line. So you just work with it upside down so the oil doesn't all come dumping out of it. And what we're going to do now on the inside here, we're going to take a, an object like a, I'll use a, an Allen wrench and I'm going to push this, there's a plunger that's inside here. I'm going to force it down by hand until it bottoms out and then I'm going to top this off with hydraulic oil. So I got a little ball end uh, hex tool here. I'm just going to set it in there. It's going to run out but you know the little bit that's in there. There it just hit the bottom. I'm just going to force that piston down. And now I'm just going to fill it up with uh, my hydraulic jack oil here. Just drip it in there. Now there are people out there that will get all bent if there's a air bubble in there. I'm not one of them. As it was, the thing was barely working. Just going to snug it up by hand, clean it up a little bit, and then reinstall it. Um, and then don't forget to tighten this thing way down. When you go back to using this thing, you'll feel now there's you, it hits resistance immediately. It's right there. So now we can crank it down maybe into the standard position. I know the owner of this particular bike is, uh, eh, he's probably 160 pounds soaking wet, so we'll just put it in the standard position for him. So this really does make a big difference when you crank these things down to be able to get the full range of motion out of the preload adjuster. Uh, this is a big help, especially if the spring is starting to get worn out. Uh, it, it really makes a, a, a good change. Another, uh, obviously another very significant performance change is if you do opt to change out the spring. Uh, whether it's the spring alone, uh, like I've shown before on some of the other videos on my bike, this is the original OEM spring. It's black. It's uh, just a standard coil spring. Uh, if you change it out to one of the progressive springs, that, that makes probably one of the most significant ride differences you can have on your bike. Boy, it really uh, changes the whole dynamic. Uh, you get into the corners and it doesn't, it doesn't porpoise or anything. It doesn't uh, kind of, you know, bounce through the corner or anything like that as you're coming in on a hard corner. Uh, it doesn't scrape the center stand. 
but this bike having only 19,000 miles on it, well the spring's pretty much brand new, it just uh, hasn't been ridden enough yet. Anyway, we'll go on to the next item. Now I'd like to talk to you about one of the biggest annoyances on an LT. The LT is notorious, and you know, you've probably experienced it on your LT already. But to have what's known as the cowbell. You hear that noise when you're driving down a highway, or you, you're going slow and you're hitting some bumps, and you're, that damn thing makes noise all the time. Drives you nuts. So, the real fix is to change this disc, but there are other ways. There's There's been some techniques that other uh, users have used. They've posted articles about it. There's there's a lot of uh, references to the cowbell. Just do a search on the forum, uh, like the LT forum, for cowbell, and you're going to come up with a whole lot of complaints. So what, what happens here is down inside the final drive here, you got these little, these little rivet points here, or these... Uh, uh, I don't know, they're screws, whatever they are, bolts. And there's a little gap in between them, right here. And they've got like a little spring or something on the back. And those springs get worn out over a very short time. And they start ringing. They start the ringing. Me, I pretty much ignore it at this point. But anyways, there's, uh, there's other discs that you can buy. I know if you get the EBC discs, they work really, really well. They're the ones that have the holes in them. Uh, the little vent holes. This is the OEM disc on this one. There's been guys that have put uh, uh, some silicone, like RTV sealant and stuff inside these, and that's uh, definitely makes a big performance uh, upgrade to it. The other thing you can do is to change out the rear pads on the caliper. Uh, if you change those out, it thickens them up. Um, whether you use the the originals, I like to use the EBC ones, the aftermarket ones, uh, the the sintered brake pads, they they last a very long time and they don't make as much noise. On my bike, I really only hear it when I'm going slow and uh, maybe crossing a railroad track or something like that. But anyways, so as soon as I as soon as my disc wears out, I'm going to change my disc. This is the one off of this '99 that I've been working on, but I'm going to change the disc out to uh, the uh, EBC disc and then I'll change the pads at the same time. To new pads and I'll will we'll really eliminate that issue so and how you would get this disc off of here back here you know, pull this uh, the ring off of here and you know there's you can see what's what's holding it on pull it off you'll be able to pull the disc off of here and then uh, be able to loosen this up and, and change it out it's not it, it is some work but it's not uh, impossible work to say the least it's, it's really Pretty simple work. All right, the last thing I want to talk about on these videos, on this particular performance video, is improving your headlight. Because as you know, uh, if you have been driving your LT at night and you can't see the road in front of you, or just a little bit in front of you, or if you're driving on a wet road at night, that's the worst. You know how dangerous it is to have, uh, it feels like you have no headlight out there. It's like you're driving with your parking lights on in your car. So, one of the greatest improvements that you could do is to get yourself one of these here. The HID kit. Uh, it's, this is an H7 bulb that fits in there. And uh, there's a lot of detailed instructions on the, on the LT forum on how to install these. Uh, I probably will install this unit into this bike and I'll, I'll create a video on the installation but I just wanted to briefly touch on it here a little bit. Um, there's a lot of debate on which color to get and which wattages to get. These uh, generally come in two different wattages. A 35 watt, this is the ballast unit here, comes in a 35 watt kit or a 55 watt kit. I personally recommend the 55 watt kit. I've used both the 35 and the 55. I've also used the different temperature ranges in the bulb. And what works best for me is a 55 watt kit accompanied with a 5000 Kelvin bulb. Now there's the original bulb that's in there 
is approximately 4300 Kelvin so it has more of a yellow cast to it this one has a little bit uh, is a lot more white it's almost pure white and it's got just that slightest uh, the slightest blue tinge to it when it's lit <clears throat> anyways what I noticed with the uh, the originally that when I first installed it, it I I bought a 6000 Kelvin and while it looked absolutely brilliant when you were looking directly at the the headlight and the, the the road sign reflection coming back to me was absolutely amazing I found that I couldn't see very well just on on the road when there were no road signs and there weren't any reflectors on the highway uh, things like that it just seemed like it was a little bit too dark so I I went to the 5000 Kelvin bulb and boy it just lights up the night It one bulb just changes the whole outlook on that bike so I'll give you just a, a brief little light up on this thing it's probably gonna just you know wash out on the because it's so bright but it's, it's gonna wash out on the video but I got a little battery here and there we go it fires off and you can see it starts to grow in its brilliance it takes just a little bit of time for it to to uh, grow to its uh, full potential anyway so I'll probably install this bulb in there or another another kit that's just like it uh, and you know you can find a, a location for these underneath the cowling the front cowl and so that ends this video on some of the performance items that you can do there's certainly other things that you can do uh, performance wise on the bike but uh, maybe I'll cover those in another video as time goes on um, Anyways, please check out our website at IllinoisBMWRiders.com if you're just seeing this on YouTube. And, uh, and if you care to donate to our club, please do so.